Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'll be starting the music composition portion of the music theory material. But before I do, I wanted to let you know that because of a great many vi videos now on many different topics, so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Before you begin this section, it's important that you go through all of the basics of theory playlist material, as well as the music arranging material. But you have, you have learned a great deal about music composition already from the basics of theory playlist material and the music arranging material. And now we will move on to learning how to take an original musical idea and develop it into a piece of music. First off, one of the best things that you can do for yourself is to listen to all different kinds of music and to try to figure out what it is that you like about the pieces of music that move you. In this way, you can learn to incorporate these effects into your own compositions. To start with, there are two basic methods of composing music. The first is the organic method and the second is the technical method. Most composers use a combination of these two methods. The organic method of music composition consists of sitting at your harp and playing arpeggios and chords and various patterns and adding scale passages as the mood strikes and moving from one key to another and back again. Basically, you sit at your harp and you fool around with this material to compose your piece of music. You can also fool around with various musical effects to find things that you like that you can incorporate into future pieces of music. A musical jam session would be an example of this organic structure. The next, the technical method of music composition is quite a bit more structured. In centuries past, musicians were often asked to compose music for various celebratory events, like church services, weddings, and parties, to name just a few. Through these centuries, musicians learned how to develop musical ideas that made it easier for future generations of musicians to perform their duties as musicians. We're going to explore some of these ideas in this segment of the music theory material now. But for a moment, let us go back into the headspace of an early musician. This musician of century, centuries past is ordered to compose music for a wedding celebration, and he decides on a catchy tune. For the purposes of this video series, we are going to use the melody of Row, Row, Row Your Boat. I am using this little tune because it's well known and you'll be able to recognize it easily as I go through this material. But understand though that your own personal little tune can be substituted easily for row, row, row your boat. Okay, so here we are with the original idea or original phrase. Okay, it's pretty catchy, but how long did it take you to play that melody? About 15 to 20 seconds? That isn't much music, and it certainly will not satisfy the royal, royal patron of this ancient musician, will it? Some things that can be done to lengthen this song to be simply repeated. works to a certain extent. It's now about maybe 30 seconds long. Still not long enough. We could decide and to add another musical phrase. Well, that's, that is getting a lot better and a lot longer now, isn't it? At this point, we will be discussing the dynamics of a musical phrase before we continue. A musical phrase is very much like a sentence in a book. It has a beginning, a middle part, and an ending. 
The beginning of the musical phrase generally starts in the key that you have chosen to rate the piece of music in, although not always, and we will cover this a little later. Anyway, the musical phrase starts in the key that you've chosen. In this case, I've chosen to write row, row, row your boat in the key of C major, so I will start on a C. And the melodic phrase is developed through the middle of the musical phrase and concludes once more on the key that you've chosen to write the piece of music in. This is the general outline, but there's a bit more involved at the end of the musical phrase. In music, when you want to indicate the ending of a musical phrase, the strongest way to do this is to put it a cadence point, which is a kind of like a period at the end of a sentence in a book. Cadences were covered in the Basic of Music Theory playlist material. The strongest cadence ending sounding is the dominant or fifth note to the tonic or first note. This cadence has a final full ending sound and is excellent at the full ending of a piece of music. But you can also use a subdominant or a fourth note to the tonic or first note, which also has a churchy full ending sound, or a dominant or fifth note to the submediant or sixth note, which is a good, good musical phrase ending, but not so good as a full final ending sound or a submediant to a dominant, or the sixth note to the fifth note, or the subdominant to the dominant, or the fourth note to the fifth note, which are good partial ending sounding cadences, something like semicolons in a sentences that have the feeling of wanting to continue on to other musical phrases. There are other cadences, but this is a good start. In the middle of the musical phrase, you can go up and use all kinds of interesting rhythms, or you can go down, or you can go up and down as you prefer, and then end with the cadence point. It is helpful to visualize the following diagram when writing your composition. The straight line indicates the tonal center, which is the key that the piece of music is written in. In our example, this tonal center is C major. The wavy line indicates the movement away from the tonal center, going up to G major and down to F major. What this creates is a sense of harmonic balance. Your actually me actual melody line can do pretty much anything you like, as long as it ends with a cadence point. But the harmonic accompaniment needs to follow this wavy line, this harmonic balance formula. First up, and then down, then up, and down, and so on. Another point to consider is that just with, as with any, any method of expression, you have happy ideas and you have sad or melancholy ideas, and you need to also incorporate these elements into your tonal harmonic accompaniment in the form of major, happy sounds, and minor, sad sounds. Using the analogy of writing again, when you read a book, you see sentences and you see paragraphs. The same holds true for music. In a book, there are generally several sentences to a paragraph, and the same holds true for music in that there are several musical phrases to a piece of music. The simplest formula to use is a two-part paragraph in music or two-phrase melody line. But often a three-phrase or even a four-phrase or more formula works well. Generally speaking, in a musical paragraph or piece of music, you start with an opening musical phrase that ends with a cadence point. The next musical phrase is different than the first phrase and is usually of a contrasting nature to the first phrase. Basically, it helps by developing the original musical phrase. If more than one musical phrase is decided upon, then each one augments and expands on the original musical phrase. The final musical phrase basically returns to the original musical phrase idea. It can be an exact duplicate of the original musical phrase, or it can be an embellished version of the original musical phrase that ends on a strong cadence, which gives the piece of music a sense of coming home. 
And this is the second part of the melody that um, I composed to uh, just embellish the first melodic idea. is a series of quarter notes and eighth notes and it basically falls into line. It sounds like it goes well with the first musical phrase. Now there are all kinds of variations to these these concepts and this is what makes music composition so creative and interesting. So getting back to our ancient musician he decides on a four-phrase melody line that include, that concludes with the first two musical phrases repeated. And this is the melody of Row, Row, Row Your Boat. a lot better but it is still not long enough so we will move on to some new ideas on how to make this piece of music longer and we will start to cover how to do this in the next video now that we have established the basic melody line we can now do an arrangement for this melody line using the techniques that you learned in the music arranging playlist series and this is Row, Row, Row Your Boat. now on many different topics and so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest so please check out my playlist page well that's it for now to stay up to date with my latest videos make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video take care <music>